I'm Sandra and I thought I'd post a video on a paraglider simulator controller I'd been working on. Some months ago I purchased a copy of Paragliding Sim from Evan at uh, HIO and was blown away by how realistic the software is. It has its shortfalls but it feels like you're actually flying around an island searching for thermals and ridge lift. There are many types of wings to choose from and right away I tried some higher ENC rated wings for acro safely doing wing overs and death spirals. The joystick is okay, but I pictured a more hands-on interface with the simulator with brake toggles, weight shift sensor, and a speed bar. There also needs to be a throttle control to go paramotoring, and a couple of basic controls like reset and camera view. I want to be able to use a real harness hanging from the ceiling with a wall projector, as well as use my office chair in front of the monitor interchangeably. This was a fairly tall order, but I came up with a reasonable solution to cover both. Anyway, I had been working on the project for a couple of weeks and suddenly Andre Bandara posted a live stream simulator session a few days ago announcing the new paraglider sim version 4.1 was out. In the chat, there were other pilots doing exactly the same thing I am, making a better controller. And interestingly, mine is very different from others I've seen thus far so I decided to post a couple of videos on it for them. Part 1. Making all the pieces. In order to make the controller work with an office chair and also be able to hang from the ceiling, there must be a strong metal frame involved. Luckily I am also a welder with about 20 years of experience from building a steel sailboat and all kinds of other things after that, so it was no big deal to fabricate something up. We no longer have a scrap yard nearby, so I had to use what was laying around here, considering there's travel bans on because of the pandemic. A section of two inch angle was really needed, but I found some angle from a bed frame which seemed strong enough for this purpose. Two heavy wall pipe sections were welded onto each end, protruding so the larger electric conduit pipe, which we have a fair amount of, can be slid over top. I had to lay the pipes down a bit as they were a bit too tight. These pipes are supports for gearboxes for the brake lines. I have a TiVo Black Widow 3D printer and I love to design and print stuff so this seemed like the perfect opportunity to power it up. The pipes need to be adjustable in height for the difference when using a chair versus hanging from the ceiling. So I used a previous 3D project I did last year for a DIY studio microphone boom. The smaller conduit slides inside the larger conduit and is tightened into a flared sleeve as the outside is turned down the threads. It works very well for this, I must say. At the frame connection, I printed a pair of ugly flex pin holders to keep pipes firmly in place, but easily removable when not being used. The frame can stay mounted to the chair or ceiling without interfering with anything else in the studio and people banging their heads on it. <laughs> The gearboxes are attached to the pipe using a sort of clamp layout, which is in turn bolted onto the boxes themselves. Another clamp is to attach a DIY brake pulley. The pulley is sized for a full stroke from hands up to deep into the brakes over three turns. The ratio is three turns or about 1080 degrees to one potentiometer turn, which is 270 degrees. There is a bungee cord attached to the lower pulley to retract the brakes that can be adjusted up and down the pole with this clamp. It's not exactly the same as pulling real brakes in, but serves the purpose close enough. Maybe in the future Evan will add an IP-based force feedback like most real flight simulators have, which would add to the bungee cord experience. The speed bar is an entirely different rig on the bar as it won't be used in the office chair. 
I can easily switch the paramotor throttle to be a speed bar controller when using it that way if I want, or just use the keyboard. I decided to make a carrier for a slide potentiometer to send the values. This carrier is on an adjustable rail that can be adjusted and the bungee cord feeds through a little slip coupler to move the slider. This makes it very adjustable. So there's little pulleys on each end of the bar and a limited amount of bungee to simulate pushing out a speed bar. These will be attached to cords and then brummels to hook onto my harness hooks. So here it is all mounted to the ceiling rafters. There's a couple of 3D printed blocks to seat the angle bar flatly onto the beams which are glued on as they won't get in the way when it's on the chair. The white rope and hooks are my hang test rig. I've used it for everything including a paramotor even though they're quite high up in the air. For this I will make up some straps and get the harness lower for a more optimal viewing angle with the projector on the wall. Part 2. The Electronics Each gearbox has a PC board, but the right side box has a joystick interface and an RF receiver for the hand controller inside. The left gearbox is mostly wiring to the main shift sensor and the left brake, of course. The joystick is made from a Teensy 2.0, which I happen to have laying around, and works well with the joystick mouse keyboard library in Arduino. A quick bit of programming and all worked right away. Well, the brakes and the speed bar inputs did. The throttle remote and weight shift sensor are a different story. This little PC board and the right brake toggle potentiometer are, right, are in the right gearbox. I left the SPI bus pins alone, just in case the aforementioned force feedback becomes reality. The weight shift inputs are bridged over to a pair of interrupt pins so I can revert to an analog method if need be. The throttle was made to resemble a gas paramotor control, sort of. Even though my electric paramotor design is a linear wrist control quite different from this, I went this way because there needs to be some buttons to control the simulator when I'm tied up in the harness far from the computer. <laughs> anyway, it's wireless using a pair of these dirt cheap Chinese boards that transmit data at 433 MHz. Because this project was also to take a break from the usual heavy programming I do for money, I didn't want to get into using another Arduino or PIC chip in the controller, so I opted for frequency to data conversion using a simple 555 timer chip. Each part uses a different frequency range, and once regulated to 5 volts is pretty stable, enough to be reliable. For example, the throttle uses 600 to 1800 Hz, while the change view button uses 300 Hz, the reset button uses 100 Hz, and the auxiliary button, which is presently set to bring the mouse up briefly to look at the wing and then back down, uses 200 or 2000 Hz. This was achieved by simply switching in an extra capacitors or resistors, but only works when the throttle is out fully. It's a compromise, I know, but I'm willing to live with it. There had to be some timeouts and noise catchers in the software because when there's no transmitter on, the cheap receiver sends out random data once its AGC comes up. This is really annoying, but some clever timing resolved it. So the whole thing runs on a 9 volt battery and is fairly comfortable to hold while holding the brake. Here's my fuzzy velour girly brakes, aren't they nice? <laughs> Next, and most interesting, is the weight shift sensor. I thought of many methods for this, from conductive rubber sheeting to air-filled bags with a differential barometric sensor or a miniaturized mechanical gear or pulley set. The main criteria is that it needs to work on both the office chair and in the harness, so it needs to be as flat as possible. The obvious choice was to make a pair of capacitive pads. So off I went into this new experimental, well for me, method. I printed up some paper templates to stack in layers with the cut aluminum foil in between. I went to seven layers, which according to calculations similar to a compression type capacitor should be more than enough to get, the, get into the two digit nanofarad range. The whole thing is mounted on a piece of aluminum plate, then spongy packing material and a chunk of uh, camping pad for more comfort. I was going to simply use the Arduino to read the capacitance, 
but was concerned about long lengths of wire involved and possible resistance at the plugs, so opted to use a pair of 555 timers to send frequencies of each pad instead. This was guaranteed to work right off and can be adjusted just as easily, plus I have all these 555 chips sitting around doing nothing. Here's the little boards in a 3D printed carrier which will clamp down on the layers of tinfoil tabs protruding from the outsides. The same clamp setup is on the inside, directly to the plate, which is common for both capacitors. Here's an audible test I did. Okay, a sitting test. to the right, leaning to the left, leaning to the right, leaning to the left. And that's how it works. Part 3. Problems. problems. So here's problems that have popped up unexpectedly. Weight shift. The sensors are better at sensing how much of your butt is off the pad rather than on. Once you're on it, the lean angle changes it very little, but the other pad shows a lot. So the software differential is more about sensing the opposite side and was inverted. It makes no difference to the final output, but that all makes sense. Another issue with the weight shift sensor is it hurts my butt after a while. I need more foam. One final problem that might be solved now is the loss of contact of uh, aluminum foil. Here's a test using the controls setup page. You can see the weight shift jumps every so often. This is when it loses contact on one plate, perhaps maybe two. If I bounce hard on the pad, or hit it, it then works good for a while. Even with all the compression, it was still losing contact when the plate flexed. I have tightened the screws again, so we'll see. The foil may have some sort of coating on it, but in any case, that's why I haven't sewed the pad permanently yet. Here's when the weight shift is working okay. The left brake okay. The right brake is okay. Speed bar good. Throttle okay. The speed bar slider was a used one out of my junk drawer. Obviously it was a balance control from a stereo because you may have noticed it pauses at the center. This must be a flat spot in the carbon for center. I don't mind it though as it's a mid-speed bar and my pod harness has two stirrups on the speed bar and one of them is at midway. Pulley noise. When I pull the brakes fast, like when flaring, the little sheaves spin very fast on their stainless rods and make loads of noise. I may remedy this with grease or some other goopy material or change the size of the shafts which will stop it. For now I just crank the volume up. The angle bar is a spring. I mentioned before that I used a part of a bed frame for the angle bar. Well, it turns out those are designed to have a certain amount of flex and springiness to them. This is okay when mounted to the ceiling, as they'll get out of the way if bumped into. But on the chair, it was absolutely ridiculous. 
Luckily, my new office chair has flip-up arms, which would be moved out of the way anyway, and I have some stretchy Velcro thingies from the boat. So I just wrap them around the arms, and all is stable as intended. Everything else seems to be great so far, but I haven't actually done a hang test yet, and I'm not sure if I have enough VGA cord to reach where the projector will need to be, or USB cord to reach the box. So stay tuned for part four, the hang test. I'm looking forward to it. Thanks so much for watching. Sandra in the Sky, out.